And joining me now with more is Richard White, senior fellow at the Hudson Institute. He's also written about China-Russia relations. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. You know, there have been a lot of discussions the last two days between Xi and Putin. How do you see China and Russia's relationship evolving down the line? For the last 20 years, it's been fairly constant. You've seen um, generally good relations, no major disputes, uh, no territorial claims. Uh, you've seen a lot of parallel policies. They tend to pursue similar policies towards North Korea, towards the Middle East, towards the United States and Europe. Uh, their economic relationship has lagged, but that's starting to pick up now that the energy sales are occurring. And there's also uh, strategic cooperation. They have these annual summits. It seems to be a, a fairly good uh, relationship, if not especially close. What do you make of the fact that Russia was the very first trip abroad for Xi since taking office? What does that say? Right. This is a, 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 has happened before. Putin made China the first place he went after uh, returning to the presidency. Uh, President Hu went to Russia as his first foreign visit. It's uh, a sign that, uh, that the relationship's close. They want to keep it that way. Uh, they also, it's good generally if you make your first foreign trip as a new leader to a country where you know you're not going to have a lot of you know, major problems, major issues. The Russians would not publicly do anything that could, could uh, hurt who, uh, President Xi. And um, it's, I think it's, it's what you anticipated it. And what happened during the meetings were what we anticipated. I'd like to get your thoughts. Uh, you know, Russia and China are both part of the BRICS summit. She is heading to that next week, as well as making a stop in Africa. Um, what do you expect to come out of the rest of this visit? Right. I think well, the whole tour has, uh, that he's making has uh, several purposes. One, there's clearly a domestic purpose to show that you now he's clearly in charge, that he can carry himself well on, this, on the international stage. His wife has made a big hit, as far as we understand, in, in, at home as well. Uh, it's also to align China where it likes to be, which is part of the emerging developing powers, you know, the rising powers, which uh, less Russia than some of the African countries that are part of the BRIC uh, group. Uh, so I think this is just a reaffirmation of the traditional lines of foreign policy. But I do have to say his speech surprised me, he, as, which, as was cited. It was, more, it was a more closely statement of values with Russia and what could be interpreted as against uh, Western, particularly United States. And so it would be interesting to see if he, we're going to see a repeat of that at the BRICS summit. She wasted no time in taking off to go on a tour to several countries once he took office. Um, is this setting the tone for his administration? What does this say about how he will approach foreign policy? Well, the interesting question is how much time he'll devote to foreign policy as opposed to domestic politics. Traditionally, uh, the, the foreign policy has not been the highest priority of Chinese leaders. It's been more domestic politics, which they include perhaps Taiwan which, and so on. Uh, but it would be interesting to see if he continues this high profile, because that would be in line with what we've seen when China in the last few years is beginning to play a much greater, more assertive role in the international stage. So it would be interesting to see whether the BRIC, this trip to the BRIC summit is followed quickly by other visits. Because that, I think that will give us a better sense of which way China is going to go in coming years. All right. Richard Weitz, thank you so much for your insight. We appreciate your time. Thank you.